my name is John Still from the University of New South Wales. This is another in my series of videos on complex analysis. In this video we're going to look at an application of the residue theorem, which I looked at in a previous video. I'm going to apply it to calculate this real integral here, integral of rational function, in this case of cosine, but it applies to functions that, uh, integrals that are rational functions with involving sines as well. And in doing this, we're going to again calculate this integral without doing any integration whatsoever. In a way, in the complex analysis course, we've come full circle, if you'll pardon the pun, as you'll see later, uh, with this example, because we started off by writing complex contour integrals, parameterizing the contour, writing down a real integral and finding the real integral. In this case, we're going to go the other way. We're going to find this real integral by finding the complex contour integral, because with the power of the residue theory, uh, it's much easier to calculate complex contour integrals. Now, the technique for these integrals, integral over 0 to 2 pi of these uh, rational functions of sines and cosines, is to let z be e to the i theta. It follows then that cos of theta is 1 half, well, it's z plus 1 upon z. Here, yeah, because cos theta is e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta. Uh, sine theta, we don't have a sine theta here, but if, if there was an example with sine theta, sine theta would be 1 upon 2i, z minus 1 upon z, and you could then substitute that in. And the other thing we need is, of course, we're going to do a change of variable, we need to sort out the d theta. Well, differentiating this thing, we see dz d theta is uh, i e to the i theta, so the d theta will in fact be dz over iz. And then we just have to put all of this in. Now, there's a little e extra trick that we can use here to make these particular ones a bit easier when some of the trig functions occur uh, on the numerator. I've just got cos theta here. If I'd had cos 2 theta, of course, I'd be involved with z squared e to the 2i theta. What we do to save ourselves having to calculate the residue to an extra pole, is we actually add in uh, i times the other trig function. In this case, we're going to uh, look at the integral of cos theta plus i sine theta d theta over the same thing, and then take the real part at the end. The advantage of that is that we'll just have e to the i z, e to the i theta, sorry, on the numerator, so there won't be an extra pole coming from the numerator. If I just substituted in cos theta is this, I'm going to get uh, poles from the denominator, and I'll have another pole at zero as an extra residue to calculate. The whole purpose of this uh, technique is to do as little work as possible, so we don't want to calculate uh, extra uh, residues if we don't have to. So what we're going to look at instead of this particular example is we're going to consider an integral I'll call capital I, the integral from zero to pi e to the i theta theta over 13 plus 12 cos theta. And then we'll take the real part of this at the end, and that will give us the cosine one. And as an added bonus, we'll actually be able to look at sine theta over 13 plus 12 uh, cos theta. And we'll find that one from the imaginary part. So, we better get on with the calculation and substitute in. I is then the integral around the unit circle as theta runs from 0 to 2 pi will run around the unit circle e to the i theta is z the d theta we'll put at this side dz over i z 13 plus well 12 cos theta multiply this expression here by 12 and we're going to get 6 z plus 1 upon z and my advice to you in doing these is, is don't try and do all the algebra in your head at once. Just write down what you've got and then simplify. I'm going to actually take this factor of i out the front. And I'm going to get the integral around the unit circle. Uh, what do I get? I get z dz over, and I will have 6z squared plus 13z plus 6. So that's the integral I now have to find, and I'm going to find it using residues. So the question is, 
where are the singularities of my integrand? Well, it's just a simple quadratic in this case, so this is high school work to find the singularities and the, therefore the zeros. And in fact, 6z squared plus 13z plus 6. Well, you could use the quadratic formula or any other method you like, but what you'll get out of this, in fact, is 3z plus 2 times 2z plus 3. A little bit of high school algebra there. So we can see that the denominator has, the denominator of the integrand, has two singularities, one at z is minus 2 thirds, and one here at z is minus 3 halves. Now, z is minus 3 halves is outside the contour. So according to the residue theorem, we don't care what the residue is there. We only need the residue at minus 2 thirds. This is pretty much typical for these sorts of questions. You'll find um, singular, some singularities in, typically only one, and the other singularity will be outside. What type of singularity is it? Well, given I factorise this this way, we have simple zeros on the denominator, so we must have simple poles. So I've only got to find the residue at the simple pole, uh, z is minus 2 thirds, multiply this expression by 2 pi i, find out the i, take the real part, and I've done the problem. No integration whatsoever. The only calculation I've got left to do is a simple limit. So we say the residue at z is, what was my point again, minus 2 thirds of my integrand, uh, which I might as well write down factorised, is, by definition, the limit as it approaches minus two-thirds of z plus two-thirds z plus z minus minus two-thirds, of course, three z plus two into two z plus three. I've deliberately written it all that way so that uh, I can just cancel off the terms. I don't need to, I don't want to use L'Hopital, I don't have to use L'Hopital here. Uh, another point I should make, perhaps as a little bit of tactical warning, the polynomials you get out here are almost invariably non-monic. Right? The leading term is hardly ever 1. So don't make the mistake of using a quadratic formula, getting the two roots and saying this thing factorises as z minus z1 times z minus z2. There will be a leading term involved. I would hope most of you would, viewing this video wouldn't make that mistake, but I think it's worth my while mentioning it. Uh, in here, though, all I need to do is now cancel off. There'll be an extra factor of 3 left on the uh, numerator, denominator here. So this is the limit as z goes to minus 2 thirds. z over 3 into 2z plus 3, which will be minus 2 thirds over... Well, I can think of that as... Uh, 6z plus 9, and 6 times minus 2 thirds, of course, um, is going to give me a minus 4. So my residue is minus 2 over 15. So all I need to do to find my integral i is multiply by, well, I've got 1 over i factor times the 2 pi i for the residue theorem times the residue minus 2 fifteenths. That's going to be minus 4 pi on 15. So that's my integral i here involving both the real and the imaginary parts. So it follows if I take the real part, well, in fact, it is just real, so the integral line was after. zero to two pi cos theta d theta over 13 plus 12 cos theta is minus four pi on 15 without any integration whatsoever. The only real calculation I've had to do, well two really, I've had to factorize a quadratic, I've had to take a very simple limit and that's the answer. What was my bonus? My bonus was the integral of sine theta d theta over 13 plus 12 cos theta. Well, that's zero. In fact, that's pretty obvious. This integral will be the same as the integral from minus pi to pi, 
sine theta over 13 plus 12 cos theta, the sine theta one would be anyway, and sine theta over 13 plus 12 cos theta is an odd function. So naturally it's integral from minus pi to pi is zero. Uh, okay, I've got something out at zero, something that wasn't very difficult, but adding it in has helped me to do this calculation. It saved me having to find the residue at z equals zero, which is what I would have had to do if I'd have just started from the original one and replaced the cos theta here with a half of z plus one upon z.